If you are an administrative professional or a leader in an organization, chances are you will be conducting meetings. This presentation is entitled Conducting Effective Meetings. The resources we have used to provide the summary are Neil Hartman's Seven Steps to Running the Most Effective Meetings Possible, Robert's Rules of Order by Robert McConnell, EffectiveMeetings.com, Karen Porter, and Roger Schwartz. Make your objectives clear. A meeting must have a specific and defined purpose. Before you send that calendar invite, ask yourself, what do I seek to accomplish? Consider who is to be invited. When you're calling a meeting, take time to think about who really needs to be there. If you're announcing a change, invite the people who are affected by the announcement. If you're trying to solve a problem, invite the people who will be good sources of information for a solution. Stick to your schedule. Create an agenda that lays out everything you plan to cover in the meeting, along with a timeline that allots a certain number of minutes to each item, and email it to people in advance. Once you're in the meeting, put that agenda up on a screen or whiteboard for others to see. This will help to keep people focused. Take no hostages. Nothing derails a meeting faster than one person talking more than his or her fair share. If you notice one person monopolizing the conversation, call him or her out by saying, we appreciate your contributions, but now we need input from others before making a decision. Be public about it. Establish ground rules early on, and this will create a framework for how your group functions. Start on time end on time. If you have responsibility for running regular meetings and you have a reputation for being someone who starts and ends promptly, chances are you may be amazed by how many of your colleagues and members will make every effort to attend your meetings. People appreciate it when you understand that their time is valuable. Ideally, your department meeting should not last longer than 60 minutes, that's one hour. Ban technology if possible. The reality is, if people are allowed to bring iPads or cell phones into the room, they won't be focusing on the meeting or contributing to it fully. Instead, they may be emailing, surfing the web, or just playing around with their technology. Follow up. It's quite common for people to come away from the same meeting with different interpretations of what went on. To reduce this risk, Email a memo highlighting what was accomplished to all who attended within 24 hours after the meeting. Document the responsibilities given, tasks delegated, and any additional deadlines. That way, everyone will be on the same page. Let's look at some meeting tips. Is a meeting necessary? Avoid a meeting if the same information could be covered in a memo, email, or brief report. Set objectives for the meeting. Before planning the agenda, determine the objectives of the meeting. The more concrete your objectives are, the more focused your agenda will be. Provide an agenda beforehand. Your agenda needs to include a one sentence description of the meeting's objectives, a list of the topics to be covered, and a list stating who will address each topic and for how long. Follow the agenda closely during the meeting. Assign meeting preparation. Give all participants something to prepare for the meeting and that meeting will take on a new significance to each group, department or member. Assign action items. Don't finish any discussions in the meeting without deciding how to act on it. Examine your meeting process. Assess what took place and make a plan to improve the next meeting. Let's talk about observing parliamentary procedures for conducting effective meetings. Take up business one item at a time. 
Like most people, members in a business meeting can only do one thing at a time. Therefore, the first principle of parliamentary procedure is that business is taken up one at a time. The following rules support this principle. Each meeting follows an order of business called an agenda. Everything on the agenda is reviewed in its proper order and disposed of before members go on to the next item on the agenda. Only one main motion can be pending at a time. When a main motion is pending, members can make motions from a class of motions called secondary motions. When secondary motions are taken up, they take precedence over the main motion. Discussion must focus on the secondary motion until it is resolved or temporarily disposed of. Some examples of secondary motions are to amend, refer to a committee, and postpone a main motion. Only one member can be assigned the floor at a time. Members take turns speaking. No member speaks twice about a motion until all members have had the opportunity to speak. Let's talk about promoting courtesy, justice, impartiality, and equality. As children, we were taught how to be courteous towards each other. In our daily dealings and meetings with other people, courtesies are the necessities of life that promote harmony and unity. Here are ways to apply courtesy during meetings. The chair or presiding officer calls the meeting to order on time. This shows courtesy to the members present. They shouldn't have to wait for the latecomers to arrive. Members take their seats promptly when the chair calls the meeting to order and conversation stops. In a virtual setting, we follow the speaker's outline on the agenda. Those members giving reports during the meeting take seats in front. Doing so saves time. In a virtual setting, we give priority to the persons assigned to present on behalf of each unit or department. Members rise to be recognized by the presiding officer and do not speak out of turn or you raise your hand with your video camera open and use a raise hand feature on Zoom or other corresponding icons on other platforms. Members always refer to other members and officers in the third person. Refer to officers by their title. For example, Mr. President, Madam President, Mr. Chairman, or Madam Chairman. Members refer to each other by saying, for example, the previous speaker or the delegate from X department or district two. This prevents personalizing the debate and in a worst case scenario, it prevents name calling or personal attacks. Let's look at the debate. In debate, members do not cross talk or talk directly to each other when another member is speaking. All remarks are made through and to the chair. Members keep discussions to the issues, not to personalities or other members' motives. When correcting a member, the presiding officer doesn't use the member's name. Instead, he or she states, will the speaker keep his or her remarks to the issue at hand? Or, if a motion is out of order, the chair states, the motion is out of order, not the member is out of order. To tell a member that he or she is out of order is technically charging the member with an offense. Members speak clearly and loudly so all can hear. Members can use a microphone if one is provided. Other members listen when a member is speaking. Let's take a quick look at the order of business for a meeting. A business meeting provides members with the opportunity to propose ideas and to participate in forming the plans and actions of the organization, team or group. To do this in an orderly and efficient fashion, the business of the meeting is conducted according to the first principle of parliamentary procedures, which states that business is taken up one item at a time. 
The plan or the established order in which the items of business are taken up is called an agenda. This is a Latin word meaning things to be done. Common parliamentary law over the years has arrived at an acceptable order for a business meeting. Sometimes, however, an organization may wish to follow a different order of business. In that case, the organization must write the order of business in its own rules of order, which should be with, but not part of, the bylaws. Planning and using agendas. In any kind of meeting, the person leading the meeting should preside from an agenda. This is an outline of items listed in order of importance that are to be accomplished at the meeting. Having an agenda keeps the meeting on track and saves time. The basic structure of an agenda comes from the order of business as established either by the parliamentary authority or by the rules of the organization. Accepted order of business. This section outlines the commonly used order of the agenda. Before any business can be transacted at a meeting, the president must determine that a quorum, that is, the required minimum number of members needed to have a meeting, is present. The president then calls the meeting to order. He or she proceeds with the organization's established order of business. If an organization has no established order of business, the following is customary for order of business for organizations that have regular meetings within a quarterly time period. The minutes of the previous meetings are read and approved. Often, members want to dispense with the reading of the minutes because they do not feel that the minutes are important to hear. However, bear in mind that the minutes are a legal document for the organization. By approving the minutes, the members agree that this is what happened at the meeting. When a legal action has been brought against the organization, courts use minutes for evidence. Therefore, it is important that the assembly or a committee named for the purpose of approving the minutes approves the minutes. The minutes of the previous meeting are read and approved. There is no time limit on minute corrections. The minutes also serve to inform members who were absent from the previous meeting of what happened at the meeting. The minutes provide an opportunity to correct oversights. For example, there may be motions that carry over business to the present meeting that are in the minutes but not on the agenda. Members who are alert while minutes are being read can ask that these motions be added to the agenda of the present meeting. Another important point is that the motion lay on the table, which allows members to temporarily set aside a motion in order to take up more urgent business. This is recorded in the minutes, but not put on the agenda. It is a parliamentary rule that, because the members vote to lay the motion on the table, only the members can make a motion to take it from the table. By listening carefully, when the minutes are read, members take note of this and know the right course of action to take. The reports of officers, board, and standing committees, those listed in the bylaws, are read and discussed. The officers and the standing committees do not need to give a report at every meeting. Place a report on the agenda only when there is something to report to the membership. The report of special committees, if there are any, are heard. Special committees are created for a particular purpose and are not listed in the bylaws. They cease to exist when they have completed their work and made their final report. Any special orders are then presented. These are motions postponed to the meeting and, by a two-thirds vote, made a special order so that they come up before unfinished business. On the other hand, a special order can be special business that comes up once a year, such as nominations and elections. Unfinished business and the general orders are then discussed. 
unfinished business is a motion that was under discussion at the time that the previous meeting adjourned. A general order is a motion that was postponed to the current meeting but not made a special order. These terms apply only in meetings of groups that meet quarterly or more often. The members proceed to new business. New business proposes an issue that is new to this meeting. It may be something not discussed before or something that was defeated at a past meeting or even at the last meeting. When the agenda items are finished and the assembly has no further business to propose, it is time to adjourn. Creating a specific agenda. After the general outline of an agenda is prepared, the person preparing the agenda fills in the details. Depending on the needs of the organization, this person can add items to the agenda and he or she can use special types of agendas. The following discussion explains how to prepare an agenda in a logical manner as well as how to add optional agenda items and adopt, mail and streamline an agenda. When preparing the agenda, review the minutes and agenda of the previous meeting looking for things that weren't accomplished. Consult the bylaws or other rules of the organization for business that is to be done at the specific meetings like nominations and elections, and check with the officers, committee chairpersons and members to see if they have business to be added to the agenda. Consulting previous meeting minutes. The most important resource for filling in agenda details is the minutes of the previous meeting. From these minutes, the agenda planner should glean any unfinished agenda items. In agenda planning, look first for any special orders. These may be special orders that were made for the previous meeting, but not disposed of before adjournment. They may be motions that were postponed and made special orders for the current meeting. Special orders are of some priority of importance. The category of special orders was created so that members can complete more important tasks before they take up any other business. Items considered special orders and therefore of high priority include nominations, election of officers, and the voting of new members into membership. After special orders comes unfinished business and general orders. The term old business can be confusing and should not be used. The first topic taken up after this category is unfinished business, which is any motion that was pending at the last meeting when the meeting adjourned. Pending means that the motion was not voted on but was being discussed when the meeting was adjourned. Next is any item that was on the agenda of the previous meeting under unfinished business that the members did not have time to take up before adjournment. Third are motions that were postponed to the previous meeting but the members did not have the time to discuss. Fourth are general orders which are motions that were postponed to the present meeting. The members take these up in order in which they were made at the previous meeting. Asking members for agenda items. In addition to the minutes, the person preparing the agenda has a number of resources to consult, namely the members themselves. Consulting the board members or other officers ahead of time about the agenda items can save time. For example, when filling in the specifics on the reports of officers, boards and committees, the president or whomever prepares the agenda should ask the appropriate people whether they have anything to report. Only those who have reports to give are placed on the agenda. Doing this saves time during the meeting because the president calls only on those who have a report to give. On the new business, the person preparing the agenda should ask the board members or other officers if they have something that they want to put on the agenda before the meeting. 
Some organizations have a rule requiring that members submit any new business items to the secretary in writing before the items are included in the agenda. However, in most organizations, when there is no new business on the agenda, the chair asks members, is there any new business? Members always have the right to present ideas to the assembly and new business is the place to do it. Adopting the agenda. Although members may adopt the agenda at the beginning of the meeting, the agenda should not tie the hands of the assembly, prevent members from bringing up business, or enable a small group to railroad through their pet projects. Agendas should have a flexibility to provide for unforeseen things that may come up in a meeting. Some organizations want to adopt an agenda believing that they can add no further items as the meeting progresses, which is not true. If an agenda is adopted, a two-thirds vote is required to change it. An organization can adopt an agenda only if its governing documents do not include rules of order dictating the order of a business meeting. Rules of order unique to a particular organization are usually included with, but not part of, the bylaws. In some types of meetings, those that occur less than quarterly, conventions or other sessions that may last for several days, adopting the agenda is most important. Because these meetings take place infrequently, adopting an agenda ensures that participants will accomplish the tasks on the agenda without being sidetracked by other issues. A majority vote adopts an agenda. After it is adopted, only a two-thirds vote or general consent may change the agenda. An organization can adopt an agenda only if its governing documents do not include rules of order dictating the order of a business meeting. Rules of order unique to a particular organization are usually included with, but not part of, the bylaws. Before an organization can legally transact any business at a meeting, a quorum must be present. Let's talk about a quorum. Quorum is a Latin word meaning of them, as in, do we have enough of them, the members. A quorum is the minimum number of members who must be present in order to conduct business. The organization's bylaws should contain this number. If the bylaws do not contain a quorum number, then according to parliamentary law, the quorum is a majority of the entire membership. The presiding officer should know what the number is and to make sure that a quorum is present before calling the meeting to order. To establish that a quorum is present, the president can take a head count of those present, the secretary can call the roll, or members can sign in. However, the officer does not have to state that a quorum is present when he or she calls the meeting to order. If, as a member, you are unsure whether a quorum is present or not, you may ask the presiding officer after he or she calls the meeting to order. To do this, stand and say the following. Member, Mr. President, I rise to a parliamentary inquiry. President, please state your inquiry. Member, is there a quorum present? If the president says yes, then say thank you and sit down. If the president says no, remind him or her. Mr. President, we cannot conduct a business without a quorum and sit down. Never conduct a business meeting without a quorum present. If business is transacted without a quorum, it is null and void. It is also important that a quorum be present throughout the entire time that business transactions take place. If you notice that people have left the meeting, and a quorum is no longer present, it is your duty to raise a point of order, which points out a breach of the rules by informing the presiding officer that a quorum is no longer present 
and any business transacted now will be null and void. Member rises and states point of order. The President, please state your point. Member, members have left and there is no longer a quorum. Any further business transacted is now null and void. President, thank you. Your point is well taken. Since there is no longer a quorum present, this meeting is adjourned. He then wraps the gavel once. Meeting agenda. An effective agenda sets clear expectations of what needs to occur before and during a meeting. It helps team members prepare, allocate time wisely, quickly get everyone on the same topic, and identifies when the discussion is complete. If problems still occur during the meeting, a well-designed agenda increases the team's ability to effectively and quickly address them. According to Robert's Rules of Order, the basic structure of an agenda comes from the order of business as established either by the parliamentary authority or by the rules of the organization. Here are some tips for designing an effective agenda for your next meeting. Seek input from team members. If you want your team to be engaged in meetings, make sure the agenda includes items that reflect their needs. Ask team members to suggest agenda items along with a reason why each item needs to be addressed in a team setting. If you ultimately decide not to include an item, be accountable. Explain your reasoning to the team member who suggested it. Select topics that affect the entire team. Team meeting time is expensive and difficult to schedule. It should mainly be used to discuss and to make decisions on issues that affect the whole team and need the whole team to solve them. These are often ones in which individuals must coordinate their actions because their parts of the organization are interdependent. They are also likely to be issues for which people have different information and needs. Examples might include how do we best allocate scarce resources? How do we reduce response time? If the team isn't spending most of the meeting talking about interdependent issues, members will disengage and ultimately not attend. Note whether the purpose of the topic is to share information, seek input for a decision, or make a decision. It is difficult for team members to participate effectively if they do not know whether to simply listen give their input or be part of the decision-making process. If people think they are involved in making a decision, but you simply want their input, everyone is likely to feel frustrated by the end of the conversation. Updates are better distributed and read prior to the meeting, using a brief part of the meeting to answer participants' questions. If the purpose is to make a decision, state the decision-making rule. If you are the former leader, at the beginning of the agenda item, you might say, if possible, I want us to make this decision by consensus. That means that everyone can support and implement the decision given their roles on the team. If we are not able to reach consensus after an hour of discussion, I will reserve the right to make the decision based on the conversations we have had. I'll tell you my decisions and my reason for making it. Estimate a realistic amount of time for each topic. This serves two purposes. First, it requires you to do the math, to calculate how much time the team will need for introducing the topic, answering questions, resolving different points of view, generating potential solutions, and agreeing on the action items that follow from discussions and decisions. Leaders typically underestimate the amount of time needed. If there are 10 people in your meeting and you have allocated 10 minutes, to decide on what conditions, if any, you will reallocate office space, you have probably underestimated the time. By doing some simple math, you would realize that the team would have to reach a decision immediately after each of the 10 members has spoken for a minute. Second, 
The estimated time enables team members to either adapt their comments to fit within the allotted time frame or to suggest that more time may be needed. The purpose of listing the time is not to stop discussions when the time has elapsed. That simply contributes to poor decision making and frustration. The purpose is to get better at allocating enough time for the team to effectively and efficiently answer the questions before it. Propose a process for addressing each agenda item. The process identifies the steps through which the team will move together to complete the discussion or make a decision. Agreeing on a process significantly increases meeting effectiveness, yet leaders rarely do it. Unless the team has agreed on a process, members will, in good faith, participate based on their own process. You've probably seen this in action. Some team members are trying to define the problem, other team members are wondering why the topic is on the agenda, and still, other team members are already identifying and evaluating solutions. The process for addressing an item should appear on the written agenda. When you reach that item during the meeting, explain the process and seek agreement. For example, I suggest we use the following process. First, let us take about 10 minutes to get all the relevant information on the table. Second, let us take another 10 minutes to identify and agree on any assumptions we need to make. Third, we will take another 10 minutes to identify and agree on the interests that should be met for any solution. Finally, we will use about 15 minutes to craft a solution that ideally takes into account all interests and is consistent with our relevant information and assumptions. Specify how members should prepare for the meeting. Distribute the agenda with sufficient time before the meeting so the team can read background material and prepare their initial thoughts for each agenda item ahead of time. Identify who is responsible for leading each topic. Someone other than the formal meeting leader is often responsible for leading the discussion of a particular agenda item. This person may be providing context for the topic, explaining data, or may have organizational responsibility for that area. Identifying this person next to the agenda item ensures that anyone who is responsible for leading part of the agenda knows it and prepares for it before the meeting. Review and modify agenda as needed. Even if you and your team have jointly developed the agenda before the meeting, take a minute to see if anything needs to be changed due to late breaking events. By checking at the beginning of the meeting, you increase the chance that the team will use its meeting time most effectively. Review and modify agenda as needed. End the meeting with a plus delta. If your team meets regularly, Two questions form a simple continuous improvement process. What did we do well? What do we want to do differently for the next meeting? Investing five or 10 minutes will enable the team to improve performance, working relationships, and team member satisfaction. Here are some questions to consider when identifying what the team has done well and what it wants to do differently. Was the agenda distributed in time for everyone to prepare? How well did team members prepare for the meeting? How well did we estimate the time needed for each agenda item? How well did we allocate our time for decision making and discussion? How well did everyone stay on topic? How well did team members speak up when they thought someone was off topic? How effective was the process for each agenda item? To ensure that your team follows through, review the results of the plus delta at the beginning of the next meeting. End of the meeting with a plus delta. Topic of the meeting or type of meeting. There are many types of meetings. For example, ABC department meeting, annual shareholders meeting, directors meeting, or XYZ project committee meeting. Put this meeting name or type at the top of your agenda as a heading. Date of the meeting. This can be your subheading centered beneath the heading. Start time of the meeting. 
Everyone should arrive a few minutes early for meetings. This includes online meetings too, in which participants may need extra time to log on or test that their computer systems actually work with the online meeting software. The start of the meeting is not the time to resolve computer compatibility issues. For the latter, you may even want to suggest in your agenda that participants log in X minutes early. The same goes for meetings by telephone. Participants should not all be trying to call in simultaneously one minute before start time. Perhaps that is part of meeting etiquette 101 knowledge, but not everyone took the course. State the obvious in your agenda when you feel it is necessary. End the time of the meeting. State this in the agenda and mean it, because participants and attendees have their own personal and work schedules planned around the stated time. If a meeting discussion needs to be continued, then during the meeting, state that the topic or subtopic will be continued, deferred, etc. until the next scheduled meeting. Then, put it on the agenda for the next relevant meeting and proceed to move on to the next item on the agenda. Location of the meeting. Is it in the conference room? In the Brown Building? Or perhaps online? In which case, be sure to include the website address and access passwords or codes as necessary. Attendees need to know where to go to meet. Provide an address and a link to a map if necessary. Roles as needed. For instance, after the heading and the subheading, you may also want to list any meeting roles, such as meeting chair, leader, facilitator, timekeeper, minute taker, and who is assigned to these roles. If the meeting will be audio recorded, you could briefly note this beside the minute taker's role. Topics and subtopics. This is the gist of your meeting and agenda. This answers the why are we here and why am I here questions. This section keeps the meeting focused and on track too. Include time frames allotted to each subtopic and, as relevant, the person responsible for leading each discussion or presentation and any other roles relevant to the individual items. You may even want to do an outcome-based agenda in which you list the outcome being sought for the topic or subtopic in a few words. For instance, outcomes may be to decide on a date for the youth department dinner, choose colors for the new conference room, brainstorm gift ideas for guest speakers for the upcoming crusade, etc. When you have the desired outcome on the agenda, whether as the topic, subtopic, or next to it as a brief elaboration, then meeting participants can come better prepared to the meeting and they are focused on exactly what it is trying to achieve. Put all of the items mentioned previously on a single sheet of paper. The agenda for a meeting that is only an hour or a few hours long should not read like a brochure. Everything noted above can fit on one side of an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. You can write the agenda straightforwardly with a header and then outline number format one, two, three, or you can create a table in Word or spreadsheet in Excel with columns, rows and cells containing the information. It does not matter which way you choose. Simplicity is key. The agenda should be clear and easy to follow at a glance. It is simply an outline for your meeting. And if done right, this outline keeps you and all the participants on track and focused on meeting actions and desired outcomes. If you have attachments for the agenda, for example, reports, spreadsheets, images, etc., put them online and hyperlink to them on the agenda. Alternatively, if they can only be distributed in person, offer to send attendees a copy on request, if it is not a mandatory reading for the meeting to function properly. You can email the agenda beforehand to meeting participants and or place it on a shared drive or cloud storage space or send it with any scheduling software such as if you are using Microsoft Outlook to organize the scheduling of the meeting. 
you do not actually have to give participants the agenda on paper if electronic distribution is an option. However, if you have any participants without access to digital communication, you will need to give them paper copies by mail, fax, or in person. Distribute this agenda as soon as you know the content of the agenda in order to give the expected participants time to properly prepare. When people have time to read the agenda and think about their input before they meet, then meetings proceed more efficiently and effectively. Nobody should be requesting or reading the agenda for the first time upon sitting down at the meeting site. A good meeting agenda gets the meeting started beforehand, figuratively speaking. The church or organization's secretary can guide the team in this area. Approval of and corrections to the minutes. The minutes of the previous meeting are read immediately after the call to order and the opening ceremonies. If an assembly meets quarterly, the minutes of an annual meeting are approved at the next regular meeting or by a committee appointed to approve the minutes. The minutes are usually approved by general consent and they can be approved as read or as corrected. Minutes may be corrected whenever an error is found, regardless of the time that has elapsed. To correct the minutes after they have been approved requires a two-thirds vote unless previous notice had been given. Nothing is ever erased from the minutes. Corrections are made in the margins. If the minutes are double-spaced, the secretary can write the corrections above the incorrect information. When material is expunged, a line is drawn through the words that are to be expunged. In other words, those are to be left out of the content of the minutes of the meeting. Crossed out material should still be readable. When minutes are approved, the word approved and the secretary's initial and date of the approval are written next to the signature of the secretary. Alternatively, a line can be provided at the bottom of the page that says approval date. When writing the minutes, each subject is a separate paragraph. Some parliamentarians recommend putting headings at the top of each new paragraph. For example, reports of officers and committees, unfinished business, new business, etc. Some secretaries leave a wide margin and then put a short summary of the paragraph in the margin. Doing this enables those looking at the minutes months or years later to easily find the item for which they are searching. However you choose to construct the minutes, be consistent. Having the minutes carefully reviewed for accuracy, spelling and grammar before putting them in final form is a good idea. Often, the members of an organization adopt motions that require someone to do something. For example, they may refer a motion to a committee to investigate and report at the next meeting. Alternatively, they may vote to buy a computer and indicate that the finance committee should buy it. The secretary is responsible for taking this information from the minutes and giving it to the proper people. A motion to refer to a committee should be typed out and given to the committee chair with the proper instructions. If the finance committee is to buy a computer, the secretary gives the exact motion that was adopted to that committee. The secretary should be diligent in seeing that the organization's wishes are carried out. We have used a number of reference sources for this presentation, including Hartman's Seven Steps to Running the Most Effective Meetings Possible, Webster's New World, Robert's Rules of Order Simplified and Applied Second Edition, EffectiveMeetings.com, Meetings in America, A Study of Trends, Costs and Attitudes Towards Business Travel, Teleconferencing and Their Impact on Productivity, Karen Porter, Components of a Good Meeting Agenda, Roger Schwartz, How to Design an Agenda, for an effective meeting. We trust that this information has been useful 
and that you will be able to apply them to the conducting of your meetings.